Hey guys, AJ is here. I appreciate your wonderful support. If you enjoy my content, please consider showing your appreciation by liking and subscribing to my channel. Thank you. In a magical world that defied the laws of gravity, colorful cosmic swirls danced through the vast emptiness. Two celestial beings, Elian and Serafina, moved with effortless grace, their forms suspended in the weightless expanse. Radiating a vibrant pink light, they embodied the essence of masculine and feminine energy. Hot on their heels, a mischievous ghost made of swirling gray matter, the ghost, gave chase. Its mischievous presence cast a shadow over the cosmic playground, craving a taste of power. Elian and Serafina shared mischievous looks, their determination evident in their eyes. They moved through the celestial landscape with a graceful playfulness, leaving behind sparkling trails of energy as they went. Elian grinned and said, Serafina, we can't let it catch us, we've got to seal that dimensional doorway. Nodding eagerly, Serafina said, Absolutely, Elian. Let's combine our powers and shut it tight before the dark energy escapes, with synchronized moves that would have made any dance troupe envious. Elian and Serafina somersaulted towards a floating platform, landing side by side. They clasped hands, their pink energies intertwining in a cosmic dance. They unleashed a melodic chant, an ancient incantation that filled the air with a playful symphony. The pink light intensified, forming a shimmering barrier around the portal leading to another realm. The ghost let out a loud gasp, its gray matter swirling with exaggerated angst in a dramatic display. It sped up, trying to catch up to the angelic duo. You won't escape me, angels. I shall devour your light and leave only darkness, the ghost warned. Elian and Serafina concentrated their energy, their voices growing louder amidst the cosmic chaos. The barrier of pink light became stronger, pushing back against the encroaching gray matter. Glittering specks of energy scattered through the celestial playground as the opposing forces collided. As the portal teetered on the brink of closure, the ghost made a last-ditch attempt, managing to squeeze through the narrowing gap. I am everlasting! Darkness shall triumph, the ghost roared. The portal slammed shut, severing the connection between dimensions. Elian and Serafina exchanged playful shrugs, knowing that a hint of darkness had managed to sneak in. Maxwell's eyes snapped open, and he found himself in a state of sudden awakening. Beads of sweat shimmered on his forehead as he sat up, his heart racing with the lingering adrenaline of his intense dream. The memory of the exhilarating chase lingered in his mind and the echoes of the ghost's haunting laughter continued to reverberate in his ears. Maxwell, with a nervous chuckle, thought, Not again. That felt way too real. He took a moment to catch his breath, shaking his head to clear the lingering confusion. The headache persisted, a gentle reminder of the cosmic adventure that unfolded within his imagination. With a grin, Maxwell thought, Why does it keep coming back to haunt me? I need to find a way to break this cycle of wild dreams. Maxwell reached for a glass of water on his bedside table, hoping to wash away the lingering unease. As he took a sip, he resolved to face the shadows that danced in his dreams and find a path to peaceful slumber. Determined to uncover the truth behind his recurring dreams and the mysterious pathways they unveiled, Maxwell resolved to find a solution. He recognized that the key to unraveling these enigmas lay within the vast resources of his high school library. With a sense of purpose burning within him, Maxwell decided to make his way to the library. He knew that within its shelves, amidst the pages of esoteric books, he could discover the knowledge and answers he sought. Excitement coursed through his veins as he envisioned the possibilities that awaited him within those walls. With each step towards the library, Maxwell's determination grew stronger, propelling him forward on his quest for understanding. He pursued the dusty shelves, searching for a book that delved into the mysteries of portals and dimensions. Finally, he discovered a weathered tome with faded gold lettering titled, Realms Unveiled. Maxwell excitedly snatched the book and thought, My favorite subject, even if it's not taught in school. He took a seat at a nearby table, flipping through the ancient pages with anticipation. As he engrossed himself in the text, he became oblivious to the sounds coming from a nearby section. But just as the whispers and giggles intensified, it caught Maxwell's attention drawing him away from his studies. Curiosity peaked, and he quietly made his way toward the commotion. Maxwell peeked around a bookshelf and froze in disbelief. Before his eyes, his cheerleader girlfriend Penelope was locked in a passionate embrace with Nathaniel, 
the captain of the school football team. Shock and hurt flooded Maxwell's expression. Maxwell uttered stammering, Penelope? Nathaniel? Maxwell, I didn't expect to see you here, Penelope said, startled. Nathaniel chuckled and said, Well, well, if it isn't the meek weakling himself, what brings you to the library at this hour, Maxwell? Maxwell's face reddened with a mix of anger and humiliation. How could you do this to me, Penelope? Maxwell asked with a shattered voice. The weight of his words hung in the air, carrying the weight of their broken trust and dashed hopes. Maxwell's voice quivered with the pain of betrayal, his eyes searching Penelope's face for answers that might never come. Oh, Maxwell, I just need someone strong, someone who can protect me, Penelope said teasingly. Strength isn't only measured by physical prowess, Penelope. I have my own strengths, and I won't let you belittle me, Maxwell uttered. Oh, what strengths could you possibly have, orphan boy? You're all alone in this world, Nathaniel said mockingly. Maxwell's eyes flashed with a mix of pain and determination. You shouldn't joke about things you don't understand, Nathaniel. I may not have a family, but I have resilience and intelligence. And I won't let you disrespect me or belittle who I am, Maxwell said angrily. Fine, if you're so strong, prove it. Nathaniel, why don't you challenge him to a duel, Penelope said. Nathaniel said, grinning, sounds like a plan. Winner takes Penelope home tonight. Maxwell took a deep breath, his mind racing. Though physically weaker, he knew he could rely on his intelligence and strategic thinking. Very well, Nathaniel. But let's make it a different kind of duel, a test of intellect and knowledge. Let's see who can answer the most questions about the topics we've been studying in school, Maxwell said confidently. Nathaniel's smile faltered slightly, but he quickly recovered. Nathaniel faked confidence and said, Fine by me, Brainiac. You're on. As they prepared to face off in a battle of wits, Maxwell's determination burned bright. He knew this was his chance to show everyone, including himself, the true strength lay within, regardless of physical prowess. Soon in the school courtyard, Maxwell stood in the middle of a gathering crowd, determined to face Nathaniel in the ultimate test of intellect and knowledge. His friend John approached him with concern etched on his face. John pleaded, Maxwell, this is crazy. You don't have to prove anything to anyone. It's not worth it, man. Maxwell looked at John, his eyes filled with determination and a flicker of love for Penelope. Maxwell resolutely said, John, I appreciate your concern, but this is something I have to do. It's about more than just proving myself. It's about showing Penelope how much I care. John shook his head, clearly worried, but he knew his friend's resolve could not be easily swayed. Sighing, John said, Fine, but promise me you'll be careful. Don't let your emotions cloud your judgment. Nodding, Maxwell said, I promise, John, I'll stay focused. The crowd fell silent as Nathaniel and Maxwell faced each other, the weight of the challenge hanging in the air. The duel began, with Nathaniel taking an early lead. His knowledge of sports and popular culture gave him an advantage. Maxwell, however, relied on his strategic thinking, answering questions with precision and utilizing his academic prowess. Maxwell thought, I can't let Nathaniel's early lead discourage me. I need to stay calm and play to my strengths. As the duel progressed, Maxwell's confidence grew. He cleverly answered questions from various subjects, narrowing the gap between him and Nathaniel. Gritting his teeth, Nathaniel said, You got lucky, Maxwell, but I won't let you embarrass me any further. Nathaniel's ego took a hit, and his frustration simmered beneath the surface. Maxwell said, smirking, It's not about luck, Nathaniel. It's about knowledge and strategy. Maybe you should focus on expanding your horizons. Enraged. Nathaniel lunged at Maxwell, disregarding the rules of their duel. He unleashed a fury of punches, catching Maxwell off guard. Penelope, horrified by the sudden turn of events, rushed to intervene. Stop, Nathaniel! You'll kill him! Penelope said panickingly. Nathaniel's anger dissipated momentarily as he realized the severity of the situation. He stepped back, breathing heavily, leaving Maxwell battered and bruised on the ground. Nathaniel said, snarling, Consider yourself lucky, Maxwell. But remember, this isn't over. Panicked and frightened, Penelope took Nathaniel's hand, pulling him away from the scene. They fled, leaving Maxwell lying on the ground. Time seemed to stand still, as Maxwell's battered body rested on the pavement. Suddenly the air shimmered, and the pink light from his recurring dreams flooded his vision. Maxwell blinked in disbelief as the energies of Elian and Serafina materialized before him, their angelic forms emanating warmth and compassion. Elian said softly, Maxwell, do not be afraid. 
We are here to guide you. Serafina nodded. Your strength lies not in physical prowess but in the depths of your intellect and kindness. Embrace your true potential. Maxwell gazed at the ethereal beings, a mix of confusion and wonder in his eyes. Maxwell whispered, Who? Who are you? What's happening to me? Elian said, smiling. We are guardians, messengers from realms beyond. Your dreams have been more than mere figments of imagination. They hold a deeper truth, a connection to the greater cosmos. Serafina pointed to Maxwell's fallen body and said, It is not your time yet, Maxwell. Rise and fulfill your destiny. As Maxwell slowly began to regain his strength, the angel's presence faded, leaving him alone on the pavement. He took a deep breath, his mind filled with questions and a newfound sense of purpose. Maxwell said determined, Destiny. I'm ready to uncover the truth and embrace my strengths, no matter where they may lead me. With a surge of newfound determination, Maxwell rose to his feet. A fire ignited within him. He was ready to embark on a transformative journey, one that would push the boundaries of his understanding and reveal the depths of his inner strength. But just as he took his first steps towards this unknown path, a wave of dizziness engulfed him. Maxwell's vision blurred, his consciousness slipping away. The world around him faded into darkness as he succumbed to the unknown, his mind drifting into the realm of unconsciousness. In this fragile state, Maxwell's dreams and reality merged, intertwining in a tapestry of mystery and possibility. Maxwell's eyes fluttered open, but something felt off. As he tried to sit up, he realized he was in a different room, surrounded by unfamiliar belongings. Confusion washed over him, and he took a moment to gather his thoughts. Maxwell looked around, confused. This isn't my room. Where the hell am I? Maxwell was completely confused and disoriented, trying to make sense of the strange situation he found himself in. Everything felt incredibly puzzling and overwhelming. It was as if the world around him had drastically changed, and he couldn't shake off the feeling that he was somehow connected to someone else, as if their identities were merging together. Suddenly, a flood of memories rushed into Maxwell's mind. He gasped as he realized that he was in the alternate universe, inhabiting the body of Jason. A deep connection formed between the two souls, allowing Maxwell to access Jason's memories. Maxwell whispered, Jason, an orphan and a weakling, just like me. He explored the memories further, discovering that this world revolved around martial arts and spiritual advancement. The strongest warriors possessed incredible skills, and upon reaching a higher spiritual level, they could journey to the fifth dimension. Maxwell was amazed to learn the truth. He thought, So, martial arts and spiritual growth were the key in this world. And to access other dimensions, I need to find an artifact that was split into three pieces ages ago. The gravity of the situation dawned upon him as he learned that countless warriors had attempted this perilous journey, many meeting their demise in the process. But there was hope. Only the true heir of the Guardians of the Dimensions could gather the pieces and unlock the higher realms. Maxwell, in Jason's body, realizing the truth said determined, I have to fulfill my destiny and uncover the truth about who I am. As he delved deeper into Jason's memories, Maxwell discovered parallels between his current life and his previous one. Maxwell said astonished, I'm an orphan again, searching for my roots. I have a cheating girlfriend whom I love deeply and there's a bully making my life difficult. Determined to bring justice to this new world and find answers to his own existence, Maxwell realized that he must confront the challenges before him. He focused his mind on the task at hand, knowing that the path ahead was treacherous, but filled with potential. With unwavering determination, Maxwell embraced his new identity as Jason and embarked on a fresh journey. He understood that unraveling the mystery surrounding his existence required not just physical strength, but also sharp intellect. Recognizing that his intelligence surpassed his previous self, Jason resolved to combine his newfound mental abilities with his honed physical skills. Jason's purpose became crystal clear. To solve the puzzle of his missing parents and discover the hidden fragments of an artifact holding the key to unlocking higher dimensions. Fueled by a thirst for knowledge and a longing to uncover his true origins, Jason propelled himself toward a destiny intertwined with the guardians of these dimensions.
This path called upon him to venture into unexplored territories and confront challenges that surpassed his wildest imagination. Jason sat at his desk, surrounded by books and scrolls, absorbed in his studies. He had come to a realization about the transfer of intelligence and decided to harness this newfound intellect to its fullest potential. His eyes glimmered with determination as he pondered his larger intention. Jason said determinedly, I refuse to accept a life of ignorance and mediocrity. With my newfound intelligence and physical training, I will break through the barriers that have kept me in the dark. Jason set aside the books momentarily, his mind filled with visions of angels, energy beings of pink light, and the relentless pursuit of the gray matter ghost. He remembered the spell they cast to close the doorway of the dimension, only to have the evil entity follow them. Those angels, those energies of pink light, they held the key to the mysteries of the dimensions. I must find a way to reach them, to understand their purpose and the significance of this realm beyond Earth. Jason thought. With his larger intention firmly planted in his mind, Jason resolved to dedicate himself to physical training. He knew that the path to cracking the mystery of his disappeared parents and unlocking the dimensions required a balance of strength and intellect. I will hone my physical abilities, pushing my body beyond its limits. But I will also nourish my mind, seeking knowledge and wisdom in every corner of this world. Intelligence will be my weapon. With it, I will outwit any enemy, overcome any obstacle, and discover the truth that had eluded me for so long. Jason thought determinedly. As the moonlight bathed the room, Jason's resolve shone brighter than ever. He knew that the journey ahead would be arduous, but he was ready to face the challenges head-on, driven by a burning desire to unveil the secrets of his past. The world Jason now inhabited was known as the Profound Sky Continent, a realm where strength reigned supreme and martial prowess was revered above all else. Unlike his previous world, this new realm operated on a system that classified martial warriors based on their cultivation levels. The journey to mastery commenced with the bone-tempering stage, where one would strengthen their physical body, laying the foundation for greater power. From there, warriors progressed through various stages, ascending through the realms of martial cultivation. The One Star Realm awaited those who successfully advanced beyond the bone-tempering stage. It was there that their journey truly began, as they delved into the mysteries of chi manipulation, honed their skills, and unlocked the potential within. The acquired stage beckoned those who achieved the three-star rank, granting them abilities beyond the ordinary. They possessed the power to overpower tigers and leopards, their strikes capable of rending the earth and splitting a small mountain in half with a single palm strike. Yet, beyond the acquired stage lay the legendary innate stage, a realm coveted by martial warriors worldwide. There, experts soared through the skies, commanding the elements with finesse and power. They were revered as godlike beings, capable of moving mountains and parting seas. Jason's eyes gleamed with anticipation at this newfound opportunity, his heart aflame with the desire to traverse the path of cultivation and ascend to unprecedented heights. However, as the memories of the body's original owner flooded his mind, Maxwell's enthusiasm was met with a chilling reality akin to icy water drenching him. The person he had reincarnated into was Jason Harrington, a descendant of the Harrington family residing in Spirit Forge. Moreover, the academy he attended, Phoenix Zen School, had a notorious reputation as a haven for underachievers in Spirit Forge. Despite dedicating nearly three years to training, his cultivation remained stagnant at the early stage of the one-star martial warrior. While others would have already advanced to the two-star realm at this point, Jason was constantly belittled by his peers and elders. The profound sky continent, with all its mysteries and challenges, lay before him like an unexplored territory waiting to be conquered. Jason, embracing his rebirth, knew that he was destined for greatness and would stop at nothing to claim his place among the legendary warriors of this extraordinary realm. The memories of this body's previous owner served as a constant reminder of his current limitations, amplifying his frustration and self-doubt. But beneath the surface of his despondency, a spark of determination flickered. No, Jason whispered, his voice filled with a newfound resolve. I refuse to accept this fate. I may have been dealt a weak hand, but that doesn't mean I have to fold and abandon my dreams. He clenched his fists, his eyes narrowing with determination. The prospect of the upcoming Marshall Mansion's recruitment presented a glimmer of hope, 
It was an opportunity, however slim, to prove himself and carve a path towards his martial aspirations. Even if I don't qualify for the strongest martial mansion, I will find a way, Jason declared, his voice brimming with determination. I will seize every chance, embrace every challenge, and push myself to the limits. If I must start from the bottom, so be it. I will rise through the ranks, step by step, until I stand among the strongest martial warriors on this profound sky continent. At that moment, a monotonous, artificial voice suddenly shocked past Jason's mind. Immediately after, an attribute panel containing the information regarding his cultivation popped up in his mind. Welcome, Host Jason. You have now become the chosen wielder of this extraordinary system, granting you access to its immense power and potential. Let us delve into the details of your newfound role. Your cultivation realm currently resides at the One Star initial stage. At this moment, you have not acquired a specific cultivation technique. Currently, you possess neither weapons nor any martial skills. You have been granted 300 enhancement points. Congratulations. You have been awarded 100 enhancement points that can be used for one lottery draw. You have been granted a storage space of one cubic meter, the system informed. Realizing his new ability, Jason burst into a fit of shock and excitement. He had never seen such a system before in his past life, and he couldn't figure out what the system was capable of. Since he technically just woke up, he wanted to get off the bed. The moment when Jason placed his hands on the bed and pushed backwards. A normal wooden bed can give zero points of enhancement. Do you want to salvage it? The notification sound in his mind caused Jason to notice vaguely that he seemed to have come into contact with a certain function of the system. In order to verify what he just heard, Jason got off the bed and walked in front of a wooden table and placed his hand on it. One normal wooden table. Do you want to salvage the item for zero enhancement points? This confirmed the system's function. With that, the system's notification rang out once again. After further experimentation using various methods, Jason concluded that only when his hand came into contact with an object's surface would the system notification sound appear again. A secret manual wrapped in blue leather suddenly fell into Jason's hands. Beyond elated from this time's lottery, Jason immediately began looking through the manual. It revealed a martial technique known as the Nine Suns Divine Art, a transcendent and divine skill bestowed upon him by the system. Jason's curiosity stirred as he directed his question towards the enigmatic system. How can I acquire more points and skills? His voice echoed within his mind, seeking guidance. In response, the system's ethereal voice reverberated through Jason's consciousness, providing the answers he sought. To attain additional points and skills, you must successfully complete the tasks assigned by the system. It conveyed with a hint of authority. The system proceeded to elaborate on Jason's initial task, unveiling its details. Your first task is to retrieve the Lumina Sprouts. These coveted magical seedlings possess extraordinary properties. Your mission entails embarking on a perilous journey to the mystical mountain of Mist Peak, where the Lumina Sprouts can be found. Your ultimate objective is to successfully retrieve these rare and powerful seedlings and ensure their safe return. The system's explanation resonated within Jason's mind, emphasizing the significance and difficulty of his task. The Lumina Sprouts held immense value, and Jason's role in acquiring them was crucial. The realization of the perilous journey ahead began to take shape in his thoughts, fueling a mix of determination and apprehension. With the path before him now illuminated, Jason understood the importance of his mission. Retrieving the Lumina Sprouts would not only contribute to his own growth, but also unlock the extraordinary properties contained within these magical seedlings. With determination, Jason decided to go on a dangerous journey to Mist Peak in search of the Lumina Sprouts. He said goodbye to his new home and set off on foot into the unknown. Jason cautiously walked through the thick forest, following clues from an old scroll. The path led him to a dangerous cliff that gave him a mix of excitement and fear. When he looked down, he saw a dark abyss with swirling mists and faint glimmers of light a hundred meters below. His heart raced as he realized this was his chance to find luminous sprouts of incredible power. But he knew it wouldn't be easy. He tied a rope to a rock and prepared himself for the descent, questioning his readiness for the challenges ahead. With shaky hands, he began his journey down the cliff, holding onto the rope tightly. The wind seemed to carry warnings, making him doubt his decision. As Jason got closer to the tunnel entrance, suddenly the rope snapped and he accidentally slipped and fell into darkness. Jason suddenly lost consciousness and fell into a deep sleep, 
completely unaware of his surroundings. The pain is too much. It feels like I'm close to death. Am I even alive? Where am I? Jason thought. He felt the passage of time slipping away, blurring his sense of its passing. He was trapped, unable to move at all. Driven by instinct, he attempted to shift his body, but it remained as stiff as solid metal, completely unresponsive. Slowly and cautiously, he opened his eyes, compelled by an unconscious urge to understand his surroundings. Jason drifted in and out of consciousness, caught in a fragmented state that left him confused and detached from reality. It took a tremendous effort to pry his eyelids open just a bit. Through the narrow gap, his blurred vision could barely make out a soft white liquid surrounding him, its edges blending and merging into an unclear hole. As Jason's consciousness flickered, confusion engulfed his mind. He mumbled in uncertainty, What happened to me? Am I still alive? Did I vanish completely? In the midst of the ensuing silence, Jason's ears caught faint whispers, mysterious voices seemingly originating from within his own thoughts. Intrigued yet unsettled, he called out, Who's there? Eager to unravel the enigmatic presence. Out of nowhere, two ethereal figures appeared before Jason. Suspended in the air, they radiated an otherworldly aura, captivating his senses. They floated gracefully, radiating a celestial presence. In a calm and quiet manner, the ethereal figures reached out their translucent hands, gently embracing Jason's trembling body. Without saying a word, they whisked him away to a hidden cave filled with ancient secrets. In an instant, they vanished, leaving Jason in awe and wonder. He realized with a hint of frustration that he couldn't communicate with the spirits. Inside the mysterious cave, Jason faced a complex maze with dark, twisting passages that resembled a puzzling maze. Undeterred by the eerie atmosphere, he relied on his instincts and determination to uncover the mysteries that lay ahead. As he ventured deeper into the maze, Jason's heart raced with anticipation. Suddenly, a faint voice whispered in his ear, providing guidance. Trust your instincts, be brave, and find your way through the shadows, it urged, giving him the courage to continue. Following the unseen voice, Jason pressed forward, his footsteps echoing through the twisting corridors. With each step, the weight of the ancient cave bore down on him, its secrets enticingly close. In a moment of frustration, he muttered to himself, There must be a way out of this darkness. I will discover it. Guided by an invisible force, Jason's determination led him to the heart of the cave, where a soft, mystical glow bathed the chamber. Amidst the flickering shadows, he discovered the luminous sprouts, a delicate and radiant flora that couldn't be ignored. Overwhelmed by their presence, Jason spoke softly. Such marvelous beings of light. I must handle them with care. With gentle precision, he plucked the luminous sprouts one by one, feeling their warm energy flowing through his fingertips. In that moment, whispers echoed in his mind, as if the spirits shared their knowledge. These sprouts possess great power, they murmured. Protect them well, for they are a key to the extraordinary. Jason's heart swelled with anticipation and determination. I will honor this gift, he declared with a newfound purpose. With the power of the luminous sprouts, I will embark on a journey that surpasses all expectations. And so, he cradled the luminous sprouts in his hands, their gentle glow illuminating his path forward. The cave trembled with anticipation, knowing that an ordinary life had been forever transformed by the extraordinary. With the luminous sprouts secured, Jason began his challenging journey back home feeling accomplished and amazed by what he had encountered. When he arrived at his house late at night, exhausted but content, he was welcomed by the sight of lights illuminating his previously empty home. As Jason briskly walked forward, his eyes widened as he spotted his landlord standing alongside the notorious bully, Adam Holt. Anger surged within him at the mere sight of Adam. The landlord, wearing a stern expression, approached Jason and made a demand. Jason. You need to vacate the premises immediately. You're causing trouble for everyone. Jason's voice dripped with defiance as he responded. I won't leave without a valid reason. You can't just throw me out. Adam, grinning maliciously, chimed in. Oh, look who's standing up for himself. Still thinking you're tough? The confrontation ignited a fire within Jason, intensifying his determination to stand his ground. Enough is enough, Adam. 
I won't let you intimidate me anymore. It's time to settle this once and for all. Adam sneered, unflinchingly taunting him. Bring it on, loser. I'll enjoy wiping that smug look off your face. Jason's anger surged as he faced Adam Holt, the bully who had plagued him for too long. The air crackled with tension as their eyes locked, brimming with intense rivalry. Do you really think you can keep pushing me around, Adam? Jason's voice quivered with a mix of frustration and determination. Well, not anymore. I won't allow you to bully me or anyone else. Adam sneered, a smirk revealing his cocky demeanor. Oh please, Jason. You're just all talk. What are you gonna do? Cry to the landlord again? The landlord, a stern figure with crossed arms, watched the confrontation in silence. Finally, he intervened with a firm tone. That's enough. No more arguing. Jason, I've had my fill of your complaints. If you're unhappy here, then leave. Jason's eyes narrowed, his fists clenched tightly. No, I won't let someone like him drive me away. His voice grew stronger, fueled by newfound resolve. I've reached my limit. It's time for me to stand up for myself. Adam chuckled mockingly, further provoking Jason's anger. Stand up for yourself? You're a joke, Jason. You always have been. In that instant, something snapped inside Jason. A surge of energy coursed through his body, pulsating with newfound strength. Calmly, he responded. Let's see who's the joke after this. The fight erupted, unleashing a flurry of martial arts moves that left onlookers in awe. Jason's movements flowed with grace and precision, catching Adam off guard. His skill and finesse surpassed anything they had witnessed before. With each strike, Jason gained the upper hand, overpowering Adam with his enhanced abilities. The landlord stood in stunned silence, eyes widening at the incredible display unfolding before them. Adam, breathless and astonished, managed to utter, How is this possible? You're just a nobody! Jason's voice resonated with unwavering determination as he replied, I won't allow you or anyone else to bring me down anymore. The fight continued, Jason's moves growing increasingly fluid and powerful. The air crackled with intensity as his prowess and strength left everyone amazed. As the fight reached its conclusion, Jason stood tall and victorious. The newfound power within him not only granted physical prowess, but also the strength to defend himself against those who sought to undermine him. In that moment, Jason realized he was no longer at the mercy of bullies and injustice. Without uttering a word, the landlord along with Adam left his house. Jason's heart swelled with relief. Their departure marked the beginning of a new chapter in his life, free from their oppressive presence. Filled with determination, Jason eagerly set to work tidying up his house, restoring order to every room. As he cleaned, a feeling of calm washed over him, replacing the lingering tension that had been present before. Once the house was tidy and peaceful, Jason's attention returned to the mysterious system that had given him newfound power. Just as he focused on it, the system chimed, offering him a reward for his recent success. Excitement sparked in his eyes as he eagerly accepted the prize. Before him appeared a set of books, their worn covers telling tales of ancient wisdom. Intricate patterns and mystical symbols adorned their bindings, hinting at the incredible knowledge held within. Jason's hands trembled with anticipation as he carefully opened the first book, his eyes widening in awe at the wonders that lay inside. These are rare and precious books, he muttered to himself, his voice filled with wonder. Books on portals and dimensions. Unable to resist the irresistible secrets within, Jason was immediately drawn into a world of captivating knowledge. He eagerly turned page after page, devouring the contents of the books. As he read aloud, his voice filled with enthusiasm, as if the words themselves held a hidden power. Amidst the pages of one particular book, Jason's attention was abruptly seized by an ancient and delicate scroll tucked between the chapters. Carefully, he unfurled the scroll, revealing ancient calligraphy etched onto its surface. Trembling with anticipation, Jason held the fragile pages, listening to the whispers of his lineage that echoed from within. Awe and disbelief filled him as he absorbed the precise details inscribed on the parchment. As his eyes scanned the scroll, he stumbled upon intricate descriptions of the Chosen One. The carefully crafted script depicted a birthmark, a swirling pattern resembling a star, adorning the back of his left shoulder. His eyes widened as he deciphered the elaborate descriptions. This birthmark, he muttered to himself, tracing his finger along the parchment's illustration, a swirling star on the back of my left shoulder. It's exactly like the one I've had since birth. 
As his fingers trailed over his own shoulder, he could feel the faint texture of the birthmark, confirming the scroll's authenticity. It was a mark that had always been a part of him, yet now it held a newfound significance, tying him to a legacy that spanned across the vast expanse of dimensions. His trembling voice continued to read, a mixture of excitement and apprehension coursing through him. The scroll revealed intricate details about his appearance. It described his eyes as a captivating blend of deep emerald green and sapphire blue, as if they held the secrets of the entire universe within their depths. The scroll also mentioned the faint shimmer of silver strands that intertwined with his dark hair, giving him an otherworldly touch that hinted at his connection to realms beyond. Overwhelmed by the revelations, Jason staggered backward and found himself standing in front of a nearby mirror, fixated on his own reflection. His bewildered expression mirrored the whirlwind of thoughts racing through his mind. The descriptions from the scroll perfectly aligned with his own appearance, leaving no doubt in his mind. He was the chosen heir of the Guardians of the Dimensions. Emotions surged within him, a mix of awe, excitement, and a profound sense of responsibility. The dreams that had haunted his nights, the presence of two angelic figures suddenly became clear. They were his parents, guiding him from the realms beyond, urging him to embrace his true purpose. I am the heir, he whispered, his voice trembling with a mixture of trepidation and determination of the guardians of the dimensions. The weight of his new destiny settled upon him, replacing his uncertainty with a renewed sense of purpose. In that moment, he realized that he held the key to unlocking the higher realms and protecting the delicate balance between dimensions. With determination, Jason closed the ancient scroll and held it tightly against his chest. The journey ahead would be challenging and full of discoveries, but he was ready to embrace it all. He would venture into unexplored territories, unravel the hidden mysteries of the dimensions, and fulfill his role as the Chosen One. Deep within his soul, a fire ignited, casting an otherworldly glow upon his path. The Guardian of the Dimensions had awakened, and the world would never be the same again. I am the true heir. I will reclaim the three pieces of the artifact and unlock the higher dimensions. Only then will I find the truth and fulfill my purpose. Maxwell thought, determined. With the truth fully awakened within him, Jason realized that he had undergone a profound transformation. No longer the weakling he once was, he understood that many aspects of his life needed to change. As part of his journey of self-discovery, he made the decision to leave his current residence and seek a new place that aligned with his newfound purpose. Having left the familiar residential area behind, Jason found solace leaning against a majestic tree by the roadside. In the tranquil embrace of nature, he took a moment to contemplate his next course of action. Renting a house seemed unnecessary now, as he had a different path to embark upon. Jason's recent growth in strength and abilities opened up new possibilities. He was aware that the Marshall Mansions, renowned for their training and guidance, were sending representatives to the city to recruit promising disciples. With his current level of skill and potential, he had a strong belief that he would be chosen among the recruits. If selected, his boarding and lodging would be taken care of by the Marshall Mansions, alleviating any concerns about his accommodation. Considering these factors, Jason felt a sense of assurance and relief. He could focus his energy on honing his skills and fulfilling his destiny, knowing that practical matters such as housing were being taken care of. The Nine Suns Divine Art, a transcendent divine technique, seemed even more potent than Heaven Stage cultivation techniques. Having just mastered it, his strength was already at the level of a one-star mid-stage martial warrior. With his power, he could already be comparable to a two-star late-stage martial warrior even before he had opened any of his acupoints. In fact, with a surge of strength flowing through his body, Jason believed he could reach a two-star peak stage martial warrior level. This newfound power made Jason excited about his limitless potential. If he could one day open all the acupoints in his body, he might be able to fight the world's strongest martial warrior. In the realm of martial warriors, the difference in strength between each stage was enormous, especially in the later stages. Holding your own against someone of a higher realm was considered legendary, but being an equal match with them would make you an unrivaled genius of your generation. In Jason's memory, he couldn't recall anyone capable of such a feat, except for the legendary unparalleled genius of the martial arts sect. 
Despite not measuring up to that level of genius, Jason still had the power of the system at his disposal. Although the system remained uncommunicative, and he couldn't learn more about its functions, its enhancement abilities filled him with excitement. With enough enhancement points, there would be no limit to his strength. He planned to test his salvaging abilities on items like medicinal pills, unique weapons, and cultivation techniques once he got to the Marshall Mansion. Even if he couldn't gain enhancement points from salvaging ordinary things, he wouldn't hesitate to use them against anyone who provoked him. Salvaging their belongings could easily leave them homeless, and him a richer man. I'll think about those things later, Jason thought, his mind filled with determination. For now, I need to focus on getting into a Marshall Mansion. It might help me to unveil the secrets. Maybe I could find something that could lead me to my destiny. After which, he found a nearby inn and stayed there for the night. The next morning, as Jason arrived at the Phoenix Zen School entrance, he coincidentally ran into his martial arts teaching instructor, Daniel Brown. Jason, come over here for a bit. I have something to discuss with you. Hearing this, Jason raised his eyebrows and walked over. After a brief conversation, Jason's face sank. He looked at the chief instructor and asked, Are you trying to say that the academy is going to expel me? No, it's not what you think, Daniel replied with a faint smile. The school authority has requested that you take a temporary break for the next two days. They believe it would be beneficial for you to focus on proper training at home and return next year for recruitment. While it is against the academy's rules to miss class, the school committee is aware of the circumstances and has approved a two-day absence for you. But why? Jason asked, narrowing his eyes. Jason, you're aware of your current cultivation level. The Marshall Mansion has already sent representatives to the academy to recruit disciples. With your current strength, attending school these few days would only lead to embarrassment. If you take some time off and train harder at home, you might have a better chance of getting into Marshall Mansion in the future. Wouldn't that be a better choice? You're scared that I'll embarrass myself? Jason said, but then he thought to himself. I think these bastards are scared that I will humiliate the school and are trying to play it off as me humiliating myself. He sneered coldly in his heart at this thought. Asking him to take a break from school, withdraw from the student recruitment examination, and go back to training was more for the school's benefit than his own. Did the instructor think that he was so stupid to fall for his words? Jason thought. Temporarily making weak students take a break was a cunning scheme that benefited the school. It prevented those students from facing the Marshall Mansion representatives and embarrassing the school, while still being able to collect tuition fees from them the next year. The plan was indeed well crafted, however Jason was not one to fall for it. Jason stood before the stern instructor, his heart pounding with a mixture of determination and frustration. The anticipation of the upcoming test of abilities had been building within him for months, and he had worked tirelessly to hone his martial skills. Now with the test just days away, he was told he couldn't participate. Sir, I've been training hard for this test, Jason pleaded, trying to keep his voice steady. I know I might not be the most talented student here, but I want to prove myself. The instructor regarded Jason with a mixture of sympathy and firmness. Jason, I understand your eagerness, but this test is not for you. It is for the students who have reached a certain level of proficiency in their martial arts. I cannot allow you to take part in it. It's for your good but I can handle myself. I've been training just as hard as anyone else, Jason protested, his frustration beginning to boil over. I don't doubt your dedication, Jason, Daniel said, his tone softening slightly. But there are reasons why we have certain requirements for the test. It is not just about strength and skill, it's also about experience and control. Jason clenched his fists, feeling the weight of the injustice pressing down on him. He knew he was capable, but it seemed that no one else believed in him. Sir, what if I insist on participating in the student recruitment examination? Jason said calmly. Daniel raised his eyebrows, unable to comprehend the change of events. He had a feeling that Jason had become a completely different person, unlike what he was before. However, he didn't dwell on it and replied with a smile. Jason, I'm doing this for your good. Skipping classes without a reason is already considered bad and puts both you and the school at stake. One for doing the act, and one for conditioning it. If news were to spread, it would provide grounds for the authorities to expel you and prevent you from retaking classes next year. Just listen to our advice. 
If you continue to act this way, you won't be accepted into any martial mansions in the future. You have to act smarter, understand? Hearing that, Jason squinted his eyes in slight disgust. Oh, so it looks like the old man is trying to change his advice into a threat now, he thought, taking the cutting remark to heart. It was a pity that the old Jason might have agreed timidly, but now, as is a powerful martial warrior, he strived for greater heights. He had nothing to lose and no reason to retreat. Waving his hand indifferently, Jason looked at Daniel and said, Oh, if you want to expel me, I will participate in today's student recruitment examination. Stop me if you can. Having said what he wanted, Jason proceeded to walk back into Phoenix End School, leaving Daniel frustrated and clenching his fists. In the martial arts practice hall of the Phoenix Zen School, the student recruitment examination was underway. Representatives from 32 martial mansions from across Spirit Forge were present to recruit students from various martial arts schools. Many third-year students lined up, taking the examinations one by one, while the examiner announced the results. The representatives from the martial mansions maintained their composed expressions, seemingly unimpressed with the students' scores. The principal and vice-principal, however, wore obsequious smiles, well aware of the high status of these representatives. The difference in strength between the martial mansion representatives and the strongest martial warriors in regular martial arts schools was enormous. The former's strength surpassed that of a four-star martial warrior, while the latter were generally at the peak stage of three-star martial warriors. The atmosphere of the examination was electric and intense, charged with a palpable sense of anticipation and excitement. As participants and spectators gather in a grand arena, the air is filled with a mix of nervousness, determination, and adrenaline. The venue is adorned with banners and flags representing different martial schools, adding to the visual spectacle. The sound of chatter and cheers echoes throughout the arena as supporters of various competitors exchange spirited conversations. The tension built as martial artists from different backgrounds and styles prepare to showcase their skills and techniques. Amid the chatter, there was silence. On the billboard, a score of one individual was displayed, then left the crowd gasping because of the extraordinary result. After the initial shock, the atmosphere became vibrant and jubilant. The air was alive with a mix of enthusiasm and anticipation, as the crowd gathered with a common purpose to show their unwavering support for Adam Holt, the martial warrior who has just achieved an extraordinary score. Excitement built, and the energy became palpable like a pulsating wave that swept through the entire gathering. Adam is incredible. His attributes are outstanding, one proclaimed. Absolutely. He's the genius of our school's third year students, already at the two-star advanced stage at such a young age. It's no wonder he achieved such high scores, another chimed in. Scoring over 90 points is simply amazing. I heard that in the entire history of Phoenix Zen School, only a handful of students scored more than 85 points, a third person added. He's too strong. Normal students can't compete with a genius like him. It's just not possible. The crowd engaged in their discussions about Adam. On the high platform, the previously expressionless Marshall Mansion representatives showed signs of relaxation. Some even had slight smiles on their faces. Not bad. This kid is pretty good, one of the representatives said. Indeed, at his age, reaching the two-star advanced stage is impressive. We didn't expect anyone to be at that level. At 18, being at the two-star advanced stage is more than commendable. The principal and vice-principal couldn't help but smile with relief and joy upon hearing the approval from the Marshall Mansion representatives. Adam was undoubtedly the strongest among the third-year students, and earning the recognition of the Marshall Mansion representatives brought great honor to Phoenix Zen School. Moreover, they noticed something even more important. The representatives from Cloudy Dream Marshall Mansion, the strongest house in Spirit Forge, nodded slightly in response to Adam's results. Witnessing this rare occurrence filled the leaders of Phoenix Zen School with excitement. As the test continued, Adam returned to his team, beaming with confidence. Just then, a fox-like girl in the crowd complimented him. Adam, you're amazing. With a fiery gaze, Adam approached the girl named Lisa Winston and whispered to her. Lisa, this is nothing. Wait and watch how I progress. We'll be graduating soon. And you know I'm the most suitable man for you, right? Don't worry. I'll treat you right if you choose me. Adam, you are the best man here. I will choose you. 
Lisa said with a coquettish smile. Just then, as Adam was about to make further advances, he noticed Jason entering the martial arts practice hall. Memories of their previous encounter flooded back, reminding him of the impressive skills Jason had displayed. Adam's expression turned grim as he muttered, Jason, what is he doing here? Lisa's foxy smile vanished as she clenched her teeth in anger upon seeing Jason. The rest of Adam's team also noticed him, and surprise spread through the crowd. Jason, why are you here? One male student asked in disbelief, aware that weaker students were advised to take a break and not attend the assessment. With calm composure, Jason replied, I am here to participate in the assessment. The hall erupted in laughter. Jason, you're the so-called trash, and you think you can participate in the assessment? What a fool. Does he even have the strength of a puppy? He'll only embarrass himself. This is a joke. He ranked last for three years, and he still thinks he can enter the Marshall Mansion. He's just dreaming. Below the assessment platform, the crowd's laughter erupted into a noisy cacophony. Quiet. What are you all doing? Shouted the Academy's principal, Rupert Barclay from the high platform, as his face was dark with anger. Unnoticed by the students, the Marshall Mansion's representatives began to judge them for their improper conduct during the occasion. Upon witnessing the principal's rage, everyone fell silent. Principal Rupert's eyes fell upon Jason, who was on the verge of joining the crowd, and his voice boomed across the hall as he called out to him. Jason, what are you doing here? Smiling, Jason replied, I'm here to participate in the assessment, Mr. Barkley. You want to participate? Principal Rupert's face turned ice cold, and he exchanged glances with Daniel, who shook his head in irritation. Principal Rupert realized that Jason didn't pay heed to the advice given to him. What's wrong, Mr. Barkley? asked a Marshall Mansion representative, frowning. Is this student taking the assessment or not? If so, let him join. Let's continue the assessment and not waste time. Trying to maintain respect, Principal Rupert straightened his back and explained. Sir, I apologize for the interruption. This student has already been expelled, yet he is here to cause trouble. Expelled? Why? The representative asked. He disregarded the academy's rules, skipped lessons for seven consecutive days, and developed a bad reputation among the students. Those were the reasons for his expulsion. After addressing the Marshall Mansion representatives, Principal Rupert pointed at Jason and ordered, Jason, you have been expelled. Leave now and don't disturb the other students taking the examination. As the crowd dispersed, Jason was left exposed to the spotlight. Surrounding students looked at him with sympathy, while Adam sneered and Lisa felt relieved. On the high platform, Principal Rupert had assumed Jason, being shy, would be scared away. To his surprise, Jason stood firmly as he fearlessly stared back at him with a hint of playfulness. Mr. Barkley, you can expel me, but I've already paid my tuition fees for this semester so there shouldn't be a reason to prevent me from taking the final exam, right? After all, even expelled students are entitled to any exam. Principal Rupert glared, shocked that Jason dared to talk back. The Marshall Mansion representatives grew impatient, and Principal Rupert asked for their opinions. One of them said, Allow him to finish the assessment quickly. Let's see if this young man is all bark and no bite or the opposite. The other representatives nodded expressionlessly. Seeing this, Jason smiled lightly, then walked confidently to the platform on the stage. As he passed Adam and others, a cold shout came from the crowd of students. It will be a great pleasure to teach you a lesson once again, punk. I've already taken your girl. Now it's time to take away your pride. Jason turned around to see Adam looking at him with a cold expression. Have fun using my used goods and, as for taking my pride, only time will tell who takes whose pride. When Jason said the word used goods, he looked at Lisa and smirked. The words hung in the air like a heavy fog, their sharpness cutting through the tense atmosphere. Jason had just insulted and ridiculed Adam in front of a room full of people. Gasps and whispers spread like wildfire among the spectators each one keenly aware that they were witnessing a pivotal moment in the unfolding drama. Adam's face contorted with a mix of fury and humiliation. His fists clenched at his sides and his eyes narrowed into fiery slits. He had always prided himself on being the dominant force in any room. But Jason's cutting words had shattered that illusion, leaving him exposed and vulnerable. Who do you think you are? Adam finally spat out, his voice trembling with suppressed rage. You're nothing more than a pathetic upstart, a nobody. I'll make you regret ever opening that filthy mouth of yours. Jason's expression remained calm and composed, a stark contrast to Adam's seething anger. 
He had expected this reaction, but he didn't back down. Instead, he raised an eyebrow and replied, Oh, I'm just stating the truth, Adam. You've always relied on intimidation and fear to get your way. But deep down, you're nothing but a coward. The room fell into an uneasy silence, as if time itself was holding its breath, waiting to see how this confrontation would unfold. The tension was palpable, and everyone could feel the impending storm brewing. In a swift motion, Adam lunged at Jason, his rage overpowering any rational thought. But before he could land a blow, Jason deftly sidestepped him, causing Adam to stumble and crash into a nearby table. The onlookers gasped, some flinching at the impact. You're just making a fool of yourself, Adam, Jason said calmly, his voice cutting through the chaos. Violence won't solve anything. But Adam was beyond reason, fueled by wounded pride and a burning desire for revenge. He sprang to his feet and charged at Jason again, his fists flying like a whirlwind. Jason skillfully dodged each attack, his movements fluid and controlled. As the two clashed, the room erupted into chaos. Some tried to intervene, but the energy of the confrontation was too intense to be quelled easily. Furniture was knocked over, and voices rose in a cacophony of shouts and gasps. Enough, one of the representatives said firmly, his voice carrying a tone of authority. This doesn't have to go any further. Walk away, and we can put an end to this. Jason, please step up to the stage and give your test. For a moment, it seemed as though Adam might resist, but the weight of defeat and humiliation began to settle on his shoulders. With a final glare at Jason, he turned and stormed out of the room, his anger still smoldering. Just then, Jason's glance turned towards the crowds who were still mocking him. Loser! shouted a group of young kids and made faces at him. The aftermath of the confrontation with Adam had left a lingering tension in the air. Jason's words had struck a nerve and the dynamics between him and Adam had forever shifted. The room was left in disarray, a visual reminder of the emotional storm that had just passed through. As the dust settled, Jason took a deep breath, the weight of the situation settling on his shoulders. He knew that this was just the beginning of the consequences he would face for his actions, but he also knew that he couldn't back down. Standing up to the antagonist was a risk, but it was a risk he was willing to take in the pursuit of justice and truth. Damn him, Adam seethed at Jason's mocking words, his expression as cold as a blizzard. Adam, you have to avenge me. This bastard dared to ridicule me by calling me used. I will not take such an insult. Lisa fumed with rage, almost near death, as Jason ignored her and walked away. Lisa, don't worry. When the assessment is over, I will cripple this trash with my bare hands. Adam responded with sinister determination, glaring at Jason's figure. Finally, it was time for Jason's test. His heart raced. Doubt tried to creep in, but he pushed it aside, reminding himself of his determination to prove his worth. Stepping onto the center stage, he felt the weight of everyone's expectations resting upon him. A Phoenix Zen school instructor stood beside him, pointing towards the examination room with a deadpan expression. Jason wasted no time on idle chatter and entered the examination room, knowing it contained instruments to test strength, speed, and reaction time. As the door closed, a red beaming light flashed from the top of the room, signaling the exam was in progress. Hey, how bad do you think this trash's attributes are? Could he even accumulate a total score of 30 points? Rubbish. 30 points is too much for him. I think you must be blind. At most, he'll only be able to earn 25 points. He's just a retard. I don't know where he got his confidence to still dare to take the assessment, even though he already knows he's going to be embarrassed. Sure, he can take the test this year. But after he gets expelled, he won't get another chance to do so next year. The crowd below the stage continued to mock Jason in hushed whispers. On the high platform, the third-year instructor Daniel and the principal stood with sullen expressions. They had wanted to impress the representatives from the Marshall Mansion and increase the rate of their students being promoted. But Jason's unexpected actions ruined their plans. They never expected a reckless boy like Jason to barge into the assessment and disrupt their arrangements. His impulsive behavior would embarrass them especially as his attributes were about to be revealed to all the Marshall Mansion representatives. Their faces turned ugly at the thought, and Principal Barkley couldn't help but harbor a deep grudge against Jason. At that moment, the red light in the examination room turned green, indicating that Jason's exam was over. The results were instantly passed to the crystal screen in the examiner's hands. 
Before Jason even came out of the room, the examiner prepared to announce the results with an expressionless face. But as he saw the numbers on the crystal screen, his eyeballs bulged with disbelief. The words he wanted to say got stuck in his throat. The examiner's once expressionless face flared with astonishment at the attributes before him. What's wrong? You hurry up, don't waste our time! Principal Rupert shouted impatiently, his frown deepening. Yes. The examiner trembled and then announced loudly, Jason, strength of 1500 with a speed of 18 meters per second, amounting to a total score of 99 points. As soon as his voice dispersed, gasps and murmurs of surprise rippled through the audience as they witnessed Jason's incredible display of skill. Even those who had once ridiculed him were now silenced by his prowess. What? Principal Rupert couldn't believe what he heard, asking the examiner to repeat himself. No one else believed it either, and no one wanted to believe those words. The hundreds of third-year students below stood petrified, gaping in doubt. Oh my god, this can't be real. How can Jason's attributes suddenly be this good? It's fake. This has to be fake. How can Jason be more outstanding than Adam? That has to be the case. He has been the weakest in the entire class for the past three years. How can the trash stuck at the bottleneck of a one-star initial stage be able to attain 99 points in the assessment? He almost achieved a perfect score for goodness sake. The students were flabbergasted, eager to know the truth. Principal Rupert, Vice Principal, and Daniel were dumbfounded. They knew the truth behind the scoring system, unlike the students. The total score of the examinations between academies had an unspoken rule. It was capped at 99 points. This cap served as a reminder to the students that there would always be someone stronger than them, so they shouldn't become complacent just because of momentary advantages. Even if a student could achieve a perfect score, the final score would automatically be deducted to 99 after the exam. So it seemed that Jason had achieved a perfect score. Few people looked at each other in confusion, and the sneers on Adam's face froze. Lisa's alluring eyes glazed over, not wanting to believe what she had just heard from the examiner. On the high platform, the 32 representatives sent by the Marshall Mansions looked at each other in dismay, traces of surprise evident in their eyes. They had all underestimated Jason, thinking he was just another useless trash in the school due to his expulsion. However, his results surpassed all their expectations. Each representative had been in their position for many years, and they had taken countless students under their tutelage, but they had never seen a student achieve a perfect score before. Who would have thought they would encounter such a rare genius student in this average martial arts school? The representative from the Dawn Marshall Mansion, seated at the head of the high platform, leaned forward, trembling in surprise. Could it be that the youngster from before had already reached the peak stage of a two-star martial warrior? Just as he was thinking, Jason pushed open the door of the examination room with his now domineering palm. He walked out, hands behind his back, wearing a calm expression on his face. At that instant, countless gazes shot toward Jason. Harold Gilcrest, the representative for the Dawn Marshall Mansion, immediately analyzed Jason's cultivation level and was taken aback by his talent. Even though he was just a one-star martial artist, he had achieved such great scores. He stood up from his seat, and the chair toppled over from the sudden force. However, he ignored the overturned chair and fixed his gaze on Jason, his expression aghast. He had never lost his composure like this after seeing a student's assessment results. As a one-star mid-stage martial warrior, Jason could rival a two-star peak-stage martial warrior at the very least. He had skipped more than a whole realm in his cultivation. At this moment, Harold's eyes flashed with excitement for Jason's potential as a martial warrior, and the same feeling of shock and awe spread among everyone else in the hall as they analyzed Jason's cultivation. It was as if a bolt of deadly lightning had struck the entire hall, shocking everyone in its path. On the other hand, hearing his scores, Jason couldn't believe his ears. A surge of elation and relief washed over him, and a smile of triumph spread across his face. The once timid boy, dubbed as trash by his peers, had now become a shining star in the martial arts school. The other students, some in shock and others in genuine admiration, congratulated Jason. The respect and recognition he had longed for were finally his. He had proved that he was not defined by his past, but by his determination to rise above it. A kind spectator approached Jason with a smile, his eyes filled with pride. 
You have proven yourself, Jason, he said. Your journey doesn't end here. It's only the beginning of what I believe will be a brilliant future. Jason nodded, his heart filled with gratitude for and belief in him. Thank you, sir, he replied. I won't let you down. I will continue to grow and strive to become the best martial artist I can be. And so Jason's triumph became a turning point in his life. He had faced adversity and emerged stronger, proving to himself and the world that he was a force to be reckoned with. As he looked ahead to the future, he knew that no challenge was insurmountable, and his dreams were within reach. The once ridiculed trash had become a beacon of hope and inspiration for all. The three figures stood in stunned silence, their faces frozen in disbelief as a startling realization washed over them. Principal Rupert, Vice Principal, and Daniel exchanged incredulous glances, their jaws dropping in unison. The revelation hit them hard. They had actually considered the same idea that Harold had just proposed. A mid-level martial warrior with only one star, yet possessing the strength to challenge a two-star peak warrior? It seemed almost impossible, like something out of a legend. In the entire 600 years since the founding of Spirit Forge, they had never witnessed such a prodigious talent. What the hell? Principal Rupert's body trembled, his face showing complete astonishment. Hadn't he just expelled Jason? If the Academy could nurture an exceptional student like him, they would receive more support and resources from the authorities. But now, with Jason already kicked out, the school had no claim on him and would miss out on any potential benefits. The realization hit Principal Rupert like a punch to the gut, leaving him feeling sick to his stomach. Principal Rupert fixed a cold gaze on Daniel, his expression betraying a sudden realization. It dawned on him that Daniel was the one who had suggested expelling Jason in the first place. His anger now turned towards the instructor, intensifying with each passing moment. Daniel's spine tingled with a sudden chill as he noticed Principal Rupert's menacing stare. He desperately wanted to say something, but the weight of the principal's gaze rendered him speechless and unable to find the right words. The room grew tense as the unspoken tension between them thickened. Little did they know, this confrontation held the power to shape their lives in unexpected ways. It was a pivotal moment that would set in motion a chain of events with far-reaching consequences. At that moment, a disgruntled roar erupted from below the platform. No, that's not possible. Jason's statistics are fake. I don't believe that a loser like him could have such strength. Everyone turned to look at the person who spoke in protest. Stepping forward from the crowd, Adam trudged with bloodshot eyes, looking at Jason with a face full of unwillingness. Yes, Principal. The exam room hasn't been maintained for several years. We were preparing it for maintenance after this year's exam. Maybe some sort of error happened with the system when it was Jason's turn to test. Daniel's eyes lit up, and he immediately said to Principal Rupert, Is that right? Upon hearing this, Principal Rupert's expression eased a little. It was indeed a possibility. For someone who had always placed last in their years at the school, achieving a perfect score seemed absurd, and there might have been an abnormality during the test. At this time, Jason suddenly let out a faint smile. With his hands behind his back, he turned around and looked at Adam indifferently, with a mocking expression. There are always people in this world who think themselves higher than others. When they discover that the results are unsatisfactory, they always resort to such suspicions. In the end, you're simply a frog in a well, never knowing how strong others can be outside. What did you just say? Blood gushed from Adam's face as he pointed at Jason fiercely. Jason, you trash. Stop acting cool just because you managed to break through a mere realm in three years. If you have the guts, come down and fight with me. Didn't you just get 99 points? Come down and see how I overwhelm you with 91 points. I'm sorry, but you are not worthy of fighting me, Jason said condescendingly with a calm expression. What? I'm not worthy? Adam's quelled anger began surging up, and he was about to go on a rampage to beat Jason up. But at that moment, a deep voice sounded from the high platform where all the representatives sat. Realizing who was speaking, Adam figuratively poured a bucket of cold water on himself to subside his emotions. There is only one way to settle this matter, and that is by a duel. Adam, since you and Jason have the highest scores, it is only fair for you to battle each other. After this, there will be no talk of fraudulent practices, and that's final. Harold said in a stern voice, dismissing all protests. Adam simply clenched his fists as a way of venting his fury, 
and stood on the spot, staring menacingly at Jason. After the representative of the Dawn Marshall Mansion voiced his words aloud, he slowly walked forward a few steps. Wearing an indifferent expression on his face, he crossed his arms in front of his chest and stared back at Jason. When Jason heard Harold, he raised his eyebrows slightly. After a moment, he understood what was requested of him. The representative from the Dawn Marshall Mansion was suspicious of his abilities, seeing that Adam, supposedly the strongest person among the third years, wanted to challenge him. Jason decided to go with the flow and compete. This would not only suppress Adam's anger, but also prove Jason's abilities, killing two birds with one stone. As long as Jason emerged victorious, it would prove the legitimacy of the examination and establish Jason's strength as stated in the assessment. As the strongest Marshall Mansion in the entire state of Spirit Forge, the Dawn Marshall Mansion possessed cultivation methods, martial skills, and instructors that were unrivaled by other Marshall Mansions. So Harold's word was law. Additionally, Jason's first goal would be to attend the Dawn Marshall Mansion, and to do that he had to impress Harold in this duel. The level of competitiveness there made Jason's fighting spirit boil with excitement. All right, I understand, Jason said with a nod of his head. He then turned around and looked at Adam's wicked smile. Jason jumped down from the high platform with a big stride and said lightly to Adam, After you, you arrogant bastard. Watch how I'll take you down. Adam had meticulously prepared himself for the battle. With a roar, he lunged at Jason with incredible speed, aiming straight for his neck. The air seemed to split as an ear-piercing sound echoed through the hall. Adam, a two-star advanced stage martial warrior, channeled all his fury into an explosive attack, surpassing the assessment's maximum strength of 1,200. His grip was so powerful that even a piece of solid wood would shatter, let alone a human's vulnerable throat. Adam seethed with anger. Being repeatedly looked down upon by this piece of trash was intolerable to his arrogance. Though he wouldn't dare to kill Jason, he aimed to cripple him and ensure he never set foot on the path of a martial warrior again. Adam's so strong. The hundreds of third-year students watching couldn't help but gasp in surprise. Even with their current speed and strength, they doubted any of them could withstand such a ferocious attack. On the high platform, the representatives from the Marshall Mansion, Phoenix Zen School's Principal Rupert, Vice Principal, and the instructor Daniel observed intently, awaiting the outcome. The truth of Jason's score would be apparent after this battle. As Adam's claws neared Jason, the latter stood motionless, not flinching even slightly. The onlookers couldn't help but sneer, assuming Jason was paralyzed with fear. But just as Adam's hands were about to grab Jason's throat, the unexpected happened. In an instant, Jason's right hand shot out like lightning and clamped onto Adam's throat, overpowering him with immense force. He swung Adam around in the air like a ragdoll before slamming him onto the ground. The impact was immense, causing a cloud of debris and dust to fill the air. Adam spat out blood, clearly stunned and injured. As Adam attempted to get up, Jason delivered another heavy blow with his foot, sending him crashing back to the ground, unconscious and severely wounded. A hush fell over the room, the stunned silence echoing through the air. Every pair of eyes was locked on the scene unfolding before them, as if time itself had paused to witness the unimaginable. Whispers filled the air, mingling with gasps of disbelief. No way. Did Jason just defeat Adam in an instant? The students exchanged bewildered glances, their minds struggling to comprehend the magnitude of what they had just witnessed. Lisa stood there, her eyes wide open in astonishment, her mind racing to make sense of the surreal events playing out before her. Meanwhile, Daniel, the instructor, staggered backward, his face pale and his hands trembling. The impact of the unexpected outcome had left him visibly shaken. This can't be true. It must be some kind of hallucination, he muttered desperately slapping himself in a feeble attempt to snap out of the bewildering reality. Yet, there lay Adam, motionless on the ground, a stark reminder that the impossible had just become possible. The gravity of the situation settled heavily upon the room, as the truth sank in with an undeniable weight. Principal Rupert, standing on the high platform, felt a chill run down his spine, regret surging through his veins. In that moment, he realized the irreversible mistake he had made by expelling Jason. The consequences of his actions became painfully clear, casting a shadow over his heart. Phoenix Zen School's martial arts practice hall was abuzz with a palpable sense of excitement and disbelief. 
Principal Rupert stood there, his mind reeling from the revelation he had just witnessed. Jason, the very student he had once dismissed as trash, had transformed into an awe-inspiring genius before their very eyes. The weight of remorse and regret bore heavily on Principal Rupert's shoulders as he watched the scene unfold. How could he have been so blind to Jason's potential? How could he have let such a prodigious talent slip through his fingers? The atmosphere was electric, as Jason's astonishing display of power reverberated through the hall. Students and instructors alike were left dumbfounded, their preconceptions shattered in an instant. The whispers and murmurs grew louder as they tried to come to terms with what they had just witnessed. But for Principal Rupert, it was more than just a revelation. It was a stark realization of the grave mistake he had made. He felt the weight of the irreversible decision he had taken, banishing a true genius from his school. This can't be real, Principal Rupert stammered, feeling a sense of overwhelming remorse for underestimating Jason's true strength. As his eyes darted between Jason and the defeated Daniel, anger and regret intertwined within him. He longed to strike Daniel for his foolish instigations that led to this disastrous outcome. He had been manipulated into believing Jason was unworthy, and he had acted without thoroughly understanding the situation. In just a few moments, Jason had proven his incredible abilities, shattering everyone's preconceptions and leaving them astounded. A monstrous sense of regret suddenly welled up from the bottom of his heart, knowing that he just made an irreversible mistake. Oh no, how could this happen? Principal Rupert exclaimed in shock. He couldn't believe that he had just expelled a true genius from his school. And not just any genius, but one among the most exceptional. Jason was incomparable to Adam in terms of talent and potential. If only such a prodigy had graduated from their academy, the authorities would have showered Phoenix Zen School with even greater rewards and funding. But now, that dream seemed as elusive as a mirage, fading away from him and his school. A mix of emotions swirled inside Principal Rupert's heart, shock, anger, and regret entwined within him. He turned his head to glare at Daniel, feeling an instinctive urge to strike the man who had instigated this disastrous decision. Everything had resulted from the foolish instigations of this idiot, labeling Jason with demeaning stigmas and ultimately expelling him. They deemed him unworthy as a cultivator, a loser, and a hopeless person. But Principal Rupert couldn't help feeling a deep sense of remorse now. If Jason wasn't worthy, then Daniel was nothing more than a crippled man for all eternity, he thought. At that moment, the students were petrified, and then suddenly, it was as if a fuse had been lit within the sturdy, causing an earth-shattering commotion to erupt. Oh, I remember now. Jason has always been a quiet person since he entered the academy three years ago. Despite being ridiculed by other students, he never once retaliated with his own hands. That's right. I recall him being fond of a certain girl, always running errands and giving her gifts. Maybe he spent all his time and money on her instead of his cultivation. That explains why his cultivation hasn't improved. He devoted everything to someone else's sake. Hey, I think the girl's name is Lisa, right? I know her. Despite growing into beauty, her coquettish personality made her involved with many men. Funny enough, even with all the money Jason gave her, her cultivation remains mediocre. What a blind girl. I can't believe she nearly ruined the life of a true genius. Thankfully, Jason has finally awakened. The echoes of gossip filled the martial arts practice hall. Lisa stood amid the crowd, her emotions conflicting, wanting to laugh and cry at the same time. But above all, regret consumed her heart for underestimating Jason so gravely. Unaware of her own emotions at the moment, she realized that the person she had deemed the worst was in fact the best of the best, a true genius. On the elevated platform, Daniel listened to the surrounding discussions and finally understood why Jason's cultivation hadn't improved over the past three years. It wasn't due to a lack of talent, but rather because Jason hadn't devoted much time and effort to cultivation. Regret flooded Daniel's heart as he realized the lost opportunity. If Jason had remained his student, he, as the chief instructor, would have reaped numerous benefits when Jason graduated and joined one of the prestigious Marshall mansions as a genius. This is excellent. I never expected to encounter a genuine genius in Phoenix Zen School this time. A boisterous laughter came from the high platform, silencing the discussions in the hall. All eyes turned to the source of the voice. Harold stepped forward, his eyes shining as he looked at Jason. Congratulations, young man. Let me introduce myself formally. 
I am Harold, a representative from the Don Marshall Mansion. I would like to extend a special invitation to you to join our Don Marshall Mansion. We have all the amenities possible for you to thrive in our establishment. What do you think? Do I have your word? As a genius, Jason had become the target of every Marshall Mansion. The other representatives, shocked by Harold's boldness, couldn't stay seated any longer. In the past, they would have waited until after the assessment to recruit students. But now, they couldn't afford to miss the chance to recruit Jason. One by one, the representatives stood up from their seats and rushed to offer Jason the opportunity to join their respective Marshall Mansions. He had become the center of attention, a sought-after talent that everyone wanted to secure. Before Jason even realized what was happening, he found himself surrounded by representatives from all the Marshall Mansions. Jason, I represent Sundance Marshall Mansion, and I sincerely hope you'll consider joining us. Jason, I'm the representative from the Great Thousand Marshall Mansion of Fallen Leaf City. Although it's a bit far from Spirit Forge, we can offer you additional rewards and benefits if you choose to come. Another representation of the mansion chimed in. That's right, Jason. If you join our Marshall Mansion, we'll fulfill all your conditions. Jason, while Dawn Marshall Mansion is prestigious, it's also extremely competitive, and the pressure can be overwhelming. I suggest considering our Spring Marshall Mansion instead. Representatives had the role of recruiting outstanding students from various academies to their respective Marshall Mansions. The rewards they offered depended on the students' potential. So, for talented students, these representatives would do whatever it took to persuade them to join their Marshall Mansion, even if it meant competing with the all-powerful Dawn Marshall Mansion, the strongest sect in Spirit Forge. After all, while a powerful Marshall Mansion was attractive, it also meant intense competition among the students to climb the ranks. The resources provided to students varied based on their ranking. Higher ranking students got more resources while lower ranking ones received fewer. New disciples who were geniuses and entered a regular Marshall Mansion could quickly climb the ranks and gain more resources for their cultivation in average mansions. On the other hand, climbing the ranks in top tier Marshall Mansions like Don Marshall Mansion, even for a genius, was exponentially harder due to the higher standards. At the top ranks of a Marshall Mansion, reaching a bottleneck was common, and only when higher ranking students graduated would one's rank naturally increase. The intense competition and pressure could be daunting for students who believed they were unrivaled in their cultivation. Some students labeled as geniuses might have the opportunity to enter Don Marshall Mansion, but they might choose to attend other Marshall Mansions to avoid being overshadowed by other geniuses. In the hall, all 31 representatives had expressed their desire to recruit Jason. Some even offered specific benefits to entice him. The third-year examinees were astonished by the enthusiasm displayed by the representatives. It was unlike anything they had seen before, as they expected the Marshall Mansion representatives to act cold and indifferent. However, the representatives treated Jason as if they were eager to please their masters, particularly the Don Marshall Mansion representative. The contrast between their attitudes was stark, leaving everyone stunned. Jason was likely to choose between Spring and Sundance Marshall Mansions, as their offers were enticing and the resources they promised were appealing. However, he surprised everyone by choosing Don Marshall Mansion. Under the shocked gazes of the students, Jason smiled faintly and spoke, Thank you to all the representatives for your warm invitations, especially to the representatives from Spring and Sundance Marshall Mansions for your generous offers. While I was tempted by your proposals, I've decided to attend Dawn Marshall Mansion. This announcement left the students in the hall gasping and astonished, unable to believe what they had just witnessed. Jason's decision spread murmurs throughout the room. Some could not believe why he would choose such a competitive Marshall Mansion when he was beginning out. They all believed it was a foolish move. Just then, one person said, If you wanted to choose Dawn Marshall Mansion from the start, why did you take so long to make your decision even after hearing the benefits that the other Marshall Mansions mentioned? Everyone in the audience was speechless hearing this, on the high platform. The hopeful smiles worn by the two representatives from Spring Marshall Mansion and Sundance Marshall Mansion froze in response to his unexpected answer. Subconsciously looking at Jason, they could only ask, why? Jason suddenly burst into condescending laughter. With his hands held behind his back, he confidently stated without hesitation, the path of a martial warrior is a struggle against the heavens. Even if that path is filled with thorns and rugged terrain, I will have no fear. 
To pursue and reach the pinnacle of martial arts, I will train in the most competitive environment, a place that can exert pressure on me. Only by doing so will I be able to achieve my goal, which is why I choose the Dawn Martial Mansion. What a fearless martial warrior. That is truly the greatest way to cultivate and strive for the pinnacle of all martial arts. This is unquestionably the most ideal trait that a true martial warrior should possess. The moment Jason's voice resonated through the hall, Harold, impressed by his ideals, began praising Jason with enthusiasm as his eyes gleamed brightly. As the representative of the Dawn Martial Mansion, he also had his ideals and pride. No matter how exceptional a genius Jason was, he would never resort to promising various benefits to entice Jason into joining their respective martial mansions as the other representatives did. Firstly, his pride as a five-star martial warrior prevented him from doing so. Secondly, Dawn Martial Mansions already had an abundance of geniuses. Regardless of whether they were geniuses or not, everyone had to start from the bottom and work their way up. Therefore, he had no reason to make any promises. Initially, even though he appeared calm on the surface, he was worried in his heart that Jason would succumb to the temptations offered by the representatives of the other Marshall mansions and choose one of them instead. After all, it was normal for young people to lack self-control and give in to their greed when faced with various temptations within reach. Before this, he thought that Jason would choose to join another Marshall mansion and felt a bit disappointed in his heart. However, he did not expect that Jason would ultimately choose the Dawn Marshall mansion. Upon hearing Jason's resounding answer, he felt a tremendous sense of relief. With that, he looked at Jason with a satisfied expression. Simultaneously, as he glanced at the dumbfounded representatives, the corners of Harold's mouth curled up into a smug smile, as if mocking them. With their mouths agape and eyes wide open, they all stood in disbelief. The time and effort they put into persuading Jason to join their martial mansions were all in vain. Immediately, taking a step forward, Harold stretched out his hand. In a sudden flash of white light, a pitch-black token appeared in his right hand, and he carefully handed it over to Jason. Jason, this is the token given to first-year disciples at the Don Marshall Mansion. With this token, you will be able to enter the Don Marshall Mansion and participate in an advanced assessment. Advanced assessment? Jason took the token and placed it in his pocket, raising his head in confusion upon hearing Harold's explanation. Harold smiled warmly and said, Allow me to further explain. Meeting the recruitment criteria for the Dawn Marshall Mansion merely indicates your potential to join. Entering the Marshall Mansion requires another assessment. The true nature of the advanced assessment evaluated whether a person truly possessed the heart of a martial warrior. As long as one possessed that essential quality, they would undoubtedly go far and achieve great things in their martial warrior path. In the Dawn Marshall Mansion, only the most elite martial warriors were allowed entry. Not only does one need potential, but they must also grasp the true essence of a martial warrior in their heart. Even if you possess great potential, Dawn Martial Mansion will reject you if you lack the heart to practice martial arts. Do you understand? Understood. Jason nodded calmly. A test of the heart of a martial warrior? This sounded interesting, he thought. Having reached the peak of his martial cultivation in his previous world, the last thing that could hinder him now in his new journey was a test of his heart for martial arts. Based on what you just said, I believe you won't have any problem passing the advanced assessment. Harold smiled as he lightly patted Jason on the shoulder and amiably said, hurry up and report to the Don Marshall Mansion. Since it's located not too far from Phoenix Zen School, I assume you should know the way there, right? Yes, I know the way. Jason nodded. With that, Jason leisurely walked out of the hall his hands placed behind his back. Under the gazes of the hundreds of third-year students, he strolled past them with an unfazed expression. At this moment, Lisa opened her mouth slightly, as if she had something to say to Jason. However, as she watched Jason's figure gradually disappear into the distance, she refrained from doing so, wearing a dejected expression. The Dawn Marshall Mansion stood tall in the northeast corner of Spirit Forge, stretching three kilometers from east to west, and a thousand paces from north to south. Nestled against a dragon-shaped mountain, it loomed as the city's grandest structure, second only to the Imperial Palace. Since it was located in the city itself, it thrived be it day or night. It contained in structure a ten-mile-long street that teemed with lively citizens who baked in the sun during the day 
and enlivened the night with joyous celebrations as dusk fell. Jason, on his way to the Don Marshall Mansion, strolled through the bustling streets, his heart surprisingly calm, despite the memories of his previous life as the world's number one martial warrior. The city's lively ambiance reminded him of something. An image of a forest flashed through his mind. Veiled in mystery and shadow, the forest looked to be inhabited by mystical creatures and guarded by powerful spirits. As the imagery delved deeper into the thick foliage, the bioluminescent flora and their radiant glow cast an otherworldly aura. Ancient trees, gnarled and majestic, stood like sentinels, their roots intertwining with tales of forgotten ages. With every progression, Jason felt the pulse of the forest, as if it whispered secrets from the distant past. He had never visited the forest in his life before, but somehow it felt familiar. But unbeknownst to him, his guardian spirits were trying to guide his way, and soon he would realize why he saw this imagery. Suddenly, he was broken out of his reverie. But as he walked, he felt a sudden change in his expression. Without thinking, he reached into his pocket, retrieving a pitch-black medallion given to him by Harold. Only now did he fully appreciate its exquisite design, with finely carved lines and the bold word Dawn emblazoned at its center. Curiously heavy in his hand, he contemplated the item before accidentally deciding to salvage it using the system. Just as he did, that regret washed over him as the medallion disappeared in a flash of white light, its enhancement points now added to Jason's tally. Realizing that he had lost his way of entering the Dawn Marshall Mansion, Jason found himself torn between returning to Phoenix Zen School and facing Harold's scolding, or pressing on and hoping to resolve the situation when he arrived at the mansion. Opting for the latter, he rationalized that he could reveal his identity and explain the mishap. Perhaps the mansion had a way to contact Harold and they could sort things out. Determined to proceed, he was ready to head on but was interrupted by a sense of excitement as he saw the enhancement points on his attribute interface. Taking a moment to think, he decided to spin the lottery once more with the points he had salvaged. With a sense of anticipation, he triggered the lottery, hoping for something useful this time. To his surprise, the result was a bag of dog food used by the true monarch to tame the howling sky dog in the ancient celestial realm. Though initially disappointed by the seemingly irrelevant item, Jason couldn't help but be drawn to its peculiar aroma. Realizing that he had momentarily been allured by the scent, he shook his head, reminding himself that he was human and not a dog. He intended to stow away the bag in his storage space, but a sudden white flash blurred his vision. In the next moment, he felt a tug on his trousers, leaving him bewildered and intrigued about the mysterious occurrences surrounding the dog food he had just acquired. Jason's eyes flashed as he reached out to grab whatever was moving around him. But to his surprise, the moment he clutched onto the object, it struggled to escape his grasp. In his hand was a small, palm-sized puppy with glistening white fur that shimmered in the sunlight. The little creature had a pair of black eyes that exuded cuteness and intelligence. Hey there, little fella, Jason said, his stern expression softening as he squatted down to pat the puppy's head gently. Are you lost? The fluffy dog sniffed Jason as if it had found something interesting in his possession, particularly a white woven bag he was holding. Barking excitedly at the bag, it then turned its attention back to Jason, seemingly trying to convey something. Jason realized that the puppy must have detected the special dog food for the howling sky dog that he had in the bag. It was impressive that the puppy could sense it and locate the source so quickly. Unable to resist the puppy's charm, Jason decided to share the dog food with it. Placing the little mud on the ground, he opened the bag and offered some food. The puppy eagerly devoured the food, and Jason couldn't help but smile at its adorable behavior. As the puppy finished eating, a strange glow seemed to flicker across its body, causing it to grow slightly bigger. Jason was puzzled by the sight, but the puppy didn't seem bothered and instead rolled around playfully, its eyes filled with contentment. Jason couldn't deny the puppy's appeal, even to someone as composed and aloof as himself. He entertained the idea of keeping the puppy, considering it had no apparent owner. After finishing its meal, the little mutt playfully rolled around, lying on its back with its cute limbs patting its belly. Its shiny black eyes had a blissful and intoxicated expression. God damn, its cute appearance would easily attract all women. No, I think both men and women, young or old, would be charmed by such a cute creature, Jason thought, shaking off any delusions he had. 
He squatted down, wearing a gentle smile, and reached out to pat the dog on its head. To his surprise, the puppy didn't show any signs of resistance. It even stuck out its tongue and licked Jason's hand with a meek expression. The more Jason interacted with it, the more he found himself charmed by the adorable creature. He wondered if he should bring it along and raise it, since he didn't know who the little thing belonged to anyway. Cuddles, where are you? How can you run so fast, little rascal? At that moment, a charming female voice echoed from not too far away, and soon after, a beautiful figure emerged from the alley. The puppy on the ground turned over and wagged its tail, seemingly responding to the woman's voice. Cuddles, you're here. I was so scared that I couldn't find you. The girl, despite feeling exhausted from the chase, let out a breath of relief and ran over to the puppy. Jason looked up and was dumbfounded. The woman's long, silky hair cascaded down to her chest like a gentle waterfall. Her slender, arched eyebrows complemented her enchanting eyes. With a delicate nose and slightly rosy cheeks, her tender cherry lips contrasted beautifully with her oval-shaped, snow-white face. Her graceful yet fragile figure seemed as if it could be blown away by a gust of wind. She was truly a masterpiece of the Creator. Not long after, the beautiful woman scolded the little mutt, Cuddles, for acting naughty and running away. Cuddles, you have always been very obedient, yet why are you acting so naughty today? If you suddenly run away like today, I'll lock you up in the future. She gently picked him up and playfully reproached him by nodding at his forehead. Cuddles seemed to understand and lowered his small ears, emitting a soft cry. He then nuzzled affectionately against the woman's arms as if seeking her attention. Amelia had been strolling through the bustling marketplace, Cuddles, her adorable puppy, trotting alongside her. As they perused the various stalls, Cuddles suddenly caught sight of something that excited him and darted away from Amelia's side while she was busy making a purchase. Amelia had hurriedly followed Cuddles' trail, her heart pounding with worry. What if he got lost? What if something happened to him? Her thoughts raced as she scanned the area for any sign of her furry friend, and thankfully she had found him. All right, it tickles. Stop moving around. The woman giggled and rubbed cuddles on his little head. Just then, the beautiful lady noticed Jason standing in front of her. However, before she could say anything, Jason nodded at her with an indifferent expression and began walking away. Despite her extraordinary beauty, Jason's mind remained focused on his pursuit of martial arts. To him, everything else was an illusion. Women, wealth, and power were all secondary and subject to fate. Since the puppy already had an owner, he saw no reason to stay any longer. Cuddles raised his head and barked softly as he reluctantly watched Jason leave. Amelia could not help but say, Hello, won't you even give me a chance to say thank you? She was surprised and curious about Cuddles' positive response to Jason. Cuddles was a king-level spirit beast, the cub of the White Wolf Emperor. These beasts were normally wary of strangers, and few would receive such a friendly response. The young woman exuded an air of elegance and beauty that captivates those around her. Having grown up in luxury and privilege, she is accustomed to getting everything she desires, be it material possessions or the admiration of others with her long, silky hair cascading down her shoulders like a gentle waterfall, and sharp, slender eyebrows that frame her enchanting eyes, she possessed a face that could be described as a masterpiece of the Creator. Yet Jason seemed unfazed and uninterested. After walking distance, Jason just turned and said, No thanks needed, miss. You have a good day ahead. With that, he walked about. What a cold man. Pretty cool in his way, Amelia muttered to herself intrigued by Jason's demeanor. Well, Mr. Cold, you've caught the eye of Amelia Anderson. We will meet soon again because if Amelia wants something, she gets it. Intrigued by the enigma that is Jason, Amelia's world shifts as she finds herself in a quest for something beyond material possessions, the heart of a man whose emotions are as serene as the wind that blows. With that thought, she smirked to herself. She then noticed that Jason was heading towards the Don Marshall Mansion, the only place in that direction. Could he be a new disciple this year? Amelia blinked her beautiful eyes, deciding not to dwell on it further. Carrying cuddles in her arms, she continued walking back towards the Don Marshall Mansion as well. A few moments later, Jason came to a halt not too far from the grand entrance of the Don Marshall Mansion. As he raised his head and gazed into the distance, an awe-inspiring view greeted his eyes. 
The vast expanse of buildings spread across dozens of miles, dominating more than half of the Great Dragon Mountain, creating a breathtaking and majestic sight that could only be associated with the renowned Dawn Marshall Mansion, the strongest Marshall Mansion in Spirit Forge. Filled with admiration for the place that would soon become the arena for his trials and challenges, Jason's heart swelled with determination and fighting spirit. Without a hint of hesitation, he walked confidently toward the entrance of the mansion, eager to begin his journey. However, before he could take more than a few steps, he was confronted by two guards stationed at the gate. One of the guards, with a rough and stern expression, stepped forward and issued a warning, questioning Jason's presence. Who are you, and where do you think you are? This is the Dawn Marshall Mansion, and you can't simply enter as you please. Jason, maintaining his composure, calmly responded, Greetings, I am one of this year's graduates, selected by the representatives from your esteemed palace. My name is Jason, and I've come here to participate in the Dawn Marshall Mansion's advancement assessment. The rough guard, sticking to his duty, requested to see Jason's freshman medallion. Looking at Jason, he had already judged him and decided that he was just a squatter, so he even asked for the medallion half-heartedly. However, Jason had an unfortunate revelation to make. About that, I'm sorry, but I accidentally lost my freshman medallion. However, you can contact Mr. Harold. He is the representative who recruited me. His explanation was cut short as the rough guard swiftly interjected, his expression turning serious. Stop! No medallion, no entry. Scram! With a sneer, the guard made it clear that Jason would not be allowed inside without the proper credentials, leaving Jason facing a potential setback right at the outset of his journey in the Dawn Marshall Mansion.